So answering step questions well requires a lot of different skills. You've got to have mastered the syllabus, you've got to know a lot of results and have them at your fingertips, have a little bit of intuition um, and a lot of understanding. But there's also some really simple things that can uh, help and you know you can get a long way by picking up a few of these ideas. I mean this, this one really I suppose is about the uh, power of a good diagram, this question. Okay, if you draw the set the diagram up correctly at the beginning, you can look at that and something can drop out very nicely in these questions that have something uh, geometric about them. Okay, so, um, so we're told in this question that we've got points R and S and they have coordinates minus A0 and, and 2A0. So, uh, so let's put those uh, onto our diagram. Okay, so one has is my at minus A and the other one is at 2A uh, here on the uh, on the x axis, both have y coordinate zero, and so let's put the y axis in here as well. And we're told that uh, these are called R and S, and then the point P has coordinates x y, where y is positive and x is smaller than 2a. So all we know is that this point P is somewhere uh, up here. Okay, it's got a positive y coordinates and its x coordinate is either is somewhere to the left of 2a it could be a long way to the left of 2a it could be here so um we're going to turn this into a triangle because we're told that uh, this angle uh, called prs so from p to r to s is alpha and the one from uh, p to s to r is beta okay and then it says show that if beta equals 2 alpha, so I'm actually going to immediately replace my beta here with, with 2 alpha, uh, then p lies on this curve, y squared is 3x squared minus a squared. We're not required to know anything really about that curve, but it's going to drop out. So actually I'm thinking really of this, you know, the fact that it lies on this curve, I'm just going to show that the coordinates of x and y satisfy that equation that we've been given. Um, so you've got an alpha and a 2 alpha, really hints at sort of double angle things. So you have to look at this diagram for a while and start thinking about maybe if you can label any uh, objects on here. So the first thing I think that seems natural is to draw a line down here and then of course this distance is y and I could say that for example I know that uh, we, uh, if I wanted to go from here to here that would be a distance of x plus a and if I wanted to go from here to here that would be a distance of 2a minus x, just comparing the relative x coordinates here. Um, and suddenly I've got something I can work with, right? Because, uh, you know, okay, I could also work out these hypotenuse using Pythagoras theorem, but I'd like to try and keep things as simple as possible. Um, so, uh, so I could say something, you see, about uh, the tan ratios of 2 alpha and alpha, because I know the opposite and adjacent sides in these triangles. And we've also got something that relates tan of 2 alpha to tan of alpha, which is the double angle formula uh, for, for tan, okay, which is uh, that tan of 2 alpha, right, is equal to uh, 2 tan alpha divided by 1 minus tan squared of alpha. Okay. So I've got a good diagram, I've got familiarity with the A level syllabus, and um, this is going to allow me to write this down because tan of 2 alpha here, you see, is just the opposite divided by uh, the adjacent. So y divided by 2a minus x. And then 2 tan of alpha over 1 minus tan squared of alpha. Well, tan of alpha is y over uh, y over x plus a. So I've got 2 times y over x plus a here divided by 1 minus y over x plus a all squared. And now I'd really better hope that this uh, rearranges into the uh, equation that we're given. Otherwise, I'm going to be studying this video again. Um, so, uh, how are we going to deal with this? Right, well, let's just, uh, okay, let's do cross-multiplying here and get rid of all the denominators. So let's write this as y times 1 minus y over uh, x plus a all squared. Uh, and then that's two lots of 2a minus a x times y over x plus a okay um diagram 
corners off here. So what do I see here? Okay, I've got a factor of y on both sides, so let's get rid of that. Um, we should write all of these out as separate lines, of course. Uh, and now I've got a denominator. The worst one here is x plus 8 all squared, so that's times 3 by that. So that's going to give me x plus 8 all squared minus y squared is 2 times 2a minus x. And then if I multiply this by x plus a squared, I'm just going to be left with an x plus a. Okay, so I'm going to have y squared then is uh, equal to uh, x plus a squared minus all of minus all of this. So let me be a little bit careful multiplying all of this out. Uh, so x plus it's going to be x plus a squared. So x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Then minus this one multiplied out. So I'm going to get minus 2 times 2ax, uh, but then I've got also a minus ax, so let's just have, let's just have 1ax there, uh, and then I've got a minus x squared and a plus 2a squared, just about fit that in here, so I've got y squared uh, is equal to x squared minus minus 2x squared, so that's 3x squared, I've got 2ax minus 2ax, so they cancel, and I've got a squared minus 4a squared, so that's minus 3a squared, uh, and that is just then 3 times x squared minus a squared. And that's exactly what we were asked to prove. So look at that. Um, how's that for a neat, efficient proof for uh, a step question, right? So, and really, I would argue, you know, this efficiency here came from uh, just a well-drawn uh, diagram, and of course, a little bit of intuition and understanding, and you know, some knowledge of the A-level syllabus here. Right. Part two says find the possible relationships between alpha and beta when zero is less than alpha is less than pi, and p lies on this curve. So. Uh, you could start with a totally new argument of some form, and, and actually there are other ways of doing this first part of the question as well um, that could be correct. But really, I think the uh, my intuition here is to say, well, okay, can can we work back through this argument? Right? Is, it, is it possible? I mean, the most, your most obvious thing to say should be, well, okay, isn't it just when isn't it just when uh, b two equals two alpha? And that's not going to be the whole story. But uh, if I can work back through this argument, then that should be the case, right? So if I if I started here and work back, yes, this holds, this would hold, this would hold, uh, this would hold, this would hold. This is all just algebraic rearrangement. Or I should say, I guess I should have noticed as well when I divided through by the y here, uh, in this line from when I cancelled out a y on both sides. You should you should notice that y is not zero, and you know we're told in the question that y is not zero. Otherwise, we might have some slight issues here. But but fundamentally, the algebraic part of this argument really. Um, really uh, does follow back to here, right? So what doesn't follow? So so what's different? Well, okay, I'm, I'm now asked to think about this 2 alpha being, in general, beta. Okay. So actually, um, this thing here, y over 2a minus x, this is now tan of beta, okay? And, but I still get this 2 tan alpha over 1 minus tan squared alpha on this side, because y over x plus uh, a is still tan of alpha, right? And this formula still represents uh, tan of 2 alpha, right? So I do get back to tan of beta equals tan of 2 alpha, right? So this is definitely a consequence, right? And for full credit on this question, what you now need to know is that this doesn't necessarily mean that beta is equal to 2 alpha, right? And we're told to consider here uh, alpha in the range 0 is less than alpha is less than pi. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to draw the graph of uh, tan alpha between 0 and pi by 2 quickly, and you should be able to do this immediately if you're preparing for a step here. Okay. So, okay, we've got one case where um, you know, alpha is between, let's say alpha is between uh, 0 and pi by 2 here, right, which is a bit like the diagram I've drawn here. We've drawn alpha as a as an angle that's less than 90 degrees or pi by 2, right? In that case, 
you know, alpha is somewhere in here, and I get my tan alpha. Um, and so if I want tan of 2 alpha, right, 2 alpha is going to be somewhere between 0 and pi, and if beta is going to be a sensible angle, okay, uh, right, I've got to choose either, you know, I could choose, uh, let's, uh, let's say my 2 alpha is here, right, so I could either make this beta, the only other options I've got are, you know, I could make this beta, or I could make actually beta, you know, I could go anywhere on the, you know, on the tan curve, right, so, um, but in that situation, actually, it does just make sense to have two alpha equals beta. But in general, you know, this uh, equality here actually just implies that uh, you know beta equals two alpha uh, plus k times pi, where where k is an integer, right? I can I can go to any other any other thing on the line. Right. So that's but so if alpha is between naught and pi by two, that makes sense. But if alpha, let's say alpha is now actually between uh, let's let, let's look at alpha between uh, pi by two and pi, right? I guess say between here and here. Um, if I took this as my, as my alpha, then my two alpha, right, is going to be uh, it's going to be somewhere over here, right? So maybe actually the thing that I'm looking at two alpha now turns out to be this one. So what I would need to do in that case is subtract pi to get back to a beta that could be a sensible angle, so that it still makes sense in this diagram for beta to be you know, between zero and uh, and pi, I think, are sensible angles, right? So actually, we get two possibilities. Um, we don't want we don't have to we don't actually want to state this full uh, full result here. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna say for sensible uh, triangles, right? We'd have that if alpha is in um, between zero. And pi by 2, I guess it doesn't make sense actually for it to be equal to pi by 2, uh, otherwise, you know, the line would be going directly upwards here. All right, then we do get beta equals 2 alpha, but for alpha in pi by 2 up to pi, um, I suppose really each of these could both be open, it doesn't quite make sense for it to be uh, at the limits here, then I would actually get that beta is 2 alpha uh, minus pi. And what's that going to look like in the triangle? Of course, well, if alpha is greater than uh, pi by 2, then suddenly, you know, my alpha is going over here. So my whole triangle uh, looks maybe something like this. And here's now my point x, y. So actually, we can see that it makes sense that beta is now smaller than alpha. And, well, uh, and, uh, and we can make sense of that case as well. So for full credit here, you don't have to draw the triangles. That's just me trying to explain a little bit of what's going on, but you do have to recognize that fundamentally you can reverse the algebraic argument, that's fine, so you get, so you, so you can make a convincing argument that tan beta is still tan 2 alpha, I would say then that, that I would then write something about this line here, and then I would uh, have to come to some conclusion in this context uh, and just narrow it down to these two cases as the final answer.